Hello, my name is Will Layden, and I'm here to help you get EVO Preview set up to help enable your EVE multiboxing. First thing you want to do is you want to get the EVO Preview software. If you just do a Google search for it, you are almost certainly to land on this, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name, uh, repo. But as the README indicates, uh, it has a new maintainer. This hasn't been updated in quite some time, and so there's a link to the new maintainer, which will take you to here. <coughs> this is the current version. Um, so you'll want to go to releases and you'll want to download the most recent release, uh, which is uh, 6, oh, oh, well, you might not want 6003, but you'll probably want 6000, uh, which includes a feature that isn't in the old repo it includes the ability to um, use cycling hotkeys so you don't have to have a key for each client which can be problematic if you have lots of clients if you have a couple it's not a big deal uh, necessarily but if you have 10 I'm looking at Baltazar over here right if you have <laughs> lots of clients uh, you're probably better off cycling through them instead of having one key dedicated to each client so this includes that functionality um, so you'll you'll download it uh, from the assets, you'll uh, you'll download the zip file, <clears throat> and I don't remember if it has an installer or not. But uh, where it ends up for me is I end up I uh, have it unzipped in, uh, in into my documents folder, Evo Preview, and I get this exe file. And on first run, you get a JSON file out of it. And the JSON file has configuration options that aren't present in the Evo Preview UI. But let's look at the Evo Preview UI. I don't even have an Eve client open yet, so it's not going to do anything special. But it will pop up, um, switching screens here, it will pop up in your system tray. Uh, and so you can click on that and you can hit restore. And then you get this, this deal. So I have it set to minimize system tray, track client locations, I forget what that does. Um, various settings that you can fiddle with uh, to, to make it do what you want. Um, thumbnails. Uh, this is uh, Evo Preview. Uh, all it really does it does two things. It it creates a th what it calls a thumbnail, which is a, a smaller, generally, resolution a representation of what is on that Eve client's screen, and it renders that somewhere else. If you have dual monitors like I do, I play with Eve on the left screen, and on the right screen I have Evo Preview and Slack and Discord and Mumble and all that stuff. Um, and so the whole this whole side of this screen gets taken up by, by Evo Preview clients. I have five accounts that I run simultaneously, uh, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, so this you get to decide what size you want the thumbnails to be, and if you want them to be semi-transparent, you can mess with the opacity. Uh, zoom if you want it to do some zooming thing, you can do that, overlay. Uh, this will um, put a little outline around the active client when you have it set this way. Uh, I like to do that so I know which one I'm looking at. Uh, and I hide all these things. So um, hitting the X minimizes the tray and uh, nothing to worry about there. It's not actually closing it. On my first screen, I'm gonna log into my Eve clients, all five of them, so you can see what happens. Um, I'm going to launch those. And as that's running, we will open up the uh, evo preview.json file, which is created in the same folder as the exe file that gets run. And I'm going to open this in VS Code. And we'll get a sense here in a second for, for how this works. We'll see what's happening. So right now, because the characters aren't all logged in all the way yet, they all are going to open up here. And then as each character actually gets logged in, they'll pop up in the places where they're supposed to be. And this is, I've configured this to be like this. Um, and this, in my case, lines up to the key binds that I have set up for this. Uh, I have a key for each client, and they're aligned on my keyboard like this. I can actually show you that in a minute. <clears throat> I've actually got the Stormy fleet going right now. Uh, but... Um, I can. I've selected the the first the first client. Uh, it's it's direct keystroke, and then I can go to like the fourth client's keystroke, and now I've got that. And what that looks like on the main screen is I go client one, client two, client three, client four, client five. Back to the right screen one, two, three, four, five. 
doesn't always update what is selected with the little green border immediately, uh, but not bad. And then I also have key cycling binds. So I have a previous and a next client. And so I'm on client one, I get it next, two, next, three, next, 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 and it cycles through. That's super useful. Okay. So we're gonna, I can also click on them to select each each guy here. Um, and then let's, uh, let's undock and get in space here. And so um, what I tend to do then, if I want to undock, I have the key effect, let me switch here. Uh, I've got my mouse set up to where I'm gonna click on undock. So I'm going click, next, click, next, click, next, click, next, click, next. And now I'm, I've clicked undock on all five characters. And using the next, the next client button. Then on my main, I'm going to create a fleet. And then once I have my fleet, I'm going to take my characters. I'm just going to all drag them into a squad. They're all going to get invites. Client two, client three, client four, client five. And now my characters are all in. Um, so now I can uh, warp fleet. All the characters are all working together. Right? And then we'll warp the fleet back. And all the while I'm doing this, I can see on the other screen, I have this representation of what's happening on all of these different screens. Now, obviously, the frame rate on these thumbnails is not, you know, full frame rate, because uh, that would be really taxing on the hardware. But it's certainly enough. And with uh, with the backgrounds and the overview, I can certainly use it to see if there are newts getting in, right? So I can I can park I can park a character in like a a cloaky dictor next system over, for example, if I'm doing some something blingy, and I can certainly see if there's a newt on grid with me. Uh, in that case. And um, so that's worthwhile. Yeah, so, you know, in EVE, right, you know, uh, I tend to do things where I get I get all my tunes in the same fleet. <clears throat> I will oftentimes uh, move a second character uh, up to a squad leader. So like if I'm mining, for example, uh, my main character, Will Layden, will have like the porpoise of the orca. Um, and then Leandra, who's my second character, uh, I'll often make her a squad leader as well, uh, so that I so that I sort of have all the barges can be operated separately from the porpoise or the orca if I want them to, or or Will Aiden can command the whole fleet. So use the fleet hierarchy to your to your advantage, however you want to play. Um, obviously, that doesn't work as well in standing. Uh, where you can only make yourself a squad leader, you can't make yourself a wing leader. Uh, but, you know. So, how do we configure Evo Preview to do what we want? Well, we do that by modifying the... Uh, let me switch windows. We do that by modifying the JSON config files. Um, now, the thing to note is that this file gets resaved when you close Evo Preview. So if you make changes to it while the client is running, make sure you copy or save those changes to a different file first uh, before you exit. Otherwise, it will overwrite them. That's worth knowing. Um, so, but what are the what are the big the big meaty things? Um, so the first thing that I want to call out here is. Um, configuration of where I want the thumbnails to be. Um, the thumbnails uh, is in this uh, in this flat layout uh, section where it's under, I guess it's in the top level. So under the flat layout uh, key in the JSON, uh, you have the window name. So Eve space hyphen space your character name and then you tell it where x y coordinates in your screen you want it to be the the first character is number of pixels from the left and the second character is the second number is number of pixels down from the top so in this dual screen setup i have it's it's counting from the top left of the top left most screen um so if you have a a, a weird um uh, 
asymmetrical monitor configuration. Uh, it may not. It may be complicated how this works for you. In my case, I have two monitors. They're both 1440p. Um, and so the top left corner of my right hand screen is 2560 zero, because right? a 1440p monitor is 2560 by 1440. Uh, now my coordinates got all screwed up because I did some moving around the things manually so they don't really line up where they're supposed to, but ideally Leandra would be uh, you know, also at 2560 because I want that to be right there on the screen edge. Uh, but then I have to decide how far down do I want it to be, and this is sort of down down to scaling. Uh, I wanted to have it be, I believe, 360 pixels tall. Uh, there was a way to, to set the aspect ratio. I just don't remember what it is right now. Um, but uh, here you're setting the position of the thumbnail, the position of the thumbnail. Uh, and you'll decide that yeah, the thumbnail size is here. So I just said I want these to be 640 by 360. Um, and so that's just defining the size of the thumbnail. So, you know, if I want this to be down 360, then I'd want this to be 720. And if it's 640 wide, then I'd want the ones that aren't 2560 to be 2560 plus 640. So Aurora and Victoria would be there. Um, so you're just saying, this is the top left corner of where I want each thumbnail to be. And you have to define that for every character. So, uh, well, Layden is the main on account number one. <coughs> Harriet and Tatiana are, are characters two and three on that account. And so I can never play all three of those at the same time. So they all are sort of account one, and I want them to all have a thumbnail in the same place. Likewise with these three characters, and those three characters, and those three characters, and those three characters, and those three characters. Um, <coughs> these ones are alphas. <laughs> these are the only ones that are, that are omegas. Um, so that's why you'll see three of these with the same position. And then three of these with the same position if I hadn't broken it. Um, so that's the thumbnails. As far as where the, you can also have, have um, you can have Evo Preview manage your client locations if you want. Um, and it can manage both the position as well as the dimensions of the window. Um, and so I choose to have them all in the same place. But, uh, but if you wanted to have, for example, if you wanted to have account one on one screen and accounts two through five on your other, on a second screen, then you could do that with this. And that's the same as just copied for every character since I put them all in the same place. Um, this is where client hotkey is where you'll define the key for activating a specific client. And so again, since, since these three characters are all the same account, they can't be played at the same time, so I use the same key for all of them. And I happen to be F24. Now, what the heck is F24? Some keyboards allow you to define <coughs> these, these extended function keys. I'm running a Kinesis Gaming, uh, uh, whatever it's called, a Freestyle Edge keyboard, which has these macro keys uh, on the side. And so I have it set up F24 is, is here, 22, you know, these keys that, that they don't exist on a regular keyboard. And so I don't have to be like, oh, is that mapped to something else? Nope, it's not. Um, and so F24, you can see is, 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 is Will Aiden. F22 is Leandra. F23 is Aurora. F20 is Kiva. That's the, <laughs> that is how you pronounce that, that's Kiva. Uh, I know it's 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 Irish for you, um, and F twenty one is Victoria, so that is why I have them set up this way because that is how the keyboard arrangement is. That's that's F twenty four. This is F twenty two. This is F twenty three. F twenty and F twenty one. F18 and F19, which are these bottom two keys on the keyboard, those are my client cycling keys. And those will be way up here. Uh, cycle group one forward, F19, cycle group one backward, F18. You can have two different cycle groups if you want. I only have the one defined. And so your cycle groups then is you say, well, what's what's number one in your group? And that's, again, the, the characters on the Willaden account. Number two in order, those are the characters on the Leandra account. Three is Aurora, four is Kiva, five is Victoria. <coughs> so I can just cycle through them. One, two, three, four, five. 
and it just loops through as time goes on, right? So those are your group orders. And unfortunately, all this stuff does have to be done in the JSON file. It can't be done in the UI, at least not yet. Um, I don't use group two, but if you want to have group two, you can do that. Um, and note here that like you don't even have to have this in here. Like if I wanted to, again, if I wanted to always have like well, laden on one screen and then the other four characters on a different screen, then I wouldn't want to cycle through them. And so what I could do then is I could have this be one, two, three, four, change the client locations, and then I could have that only cycle through those while the laden account stays where it is. So lots of options. Uh, but again, you have to define for every character because the, the window, the app window, uh, is what it looks like. Eep dash character name, eep dash character name. So that's what this is looking for. This is looking for the name of the window. Um, so, yeah, that's how you configure uh, Evo Preview. And so what you'll do is if you want to make a change to something, like I kind of want to fix this spacing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Evo Preview. I'm going to do that by going to the right hand screen. I'm going to right click it, exit. <coughs> now I can, now I can edit. I'm going to fix the client locations because I want this to be 2560. In fact, I want that to be 2560. I want that to be 360. I just broke this the other day when I was fiddling with something else. And then this should be 3200. I don't know what that Kellen's doing. Oh, because he's an alpha. He can never play with other characters, so he's, so he's sort of wherever he wants to be. Um, I could just remove those completely. All right. Then we'll save that. And then we'll reopen Evo Preview, and that should fix all that. You see there's no gap there anymore because I've I've hard coded the locations now. So that's it. That that's Evo preview. Um, you can switch between between them very simply, very quickly and easily. Uh, the, the this config JSON file uh, lives naturally in wherever the exe file is that you're selecting. Um, that's uh, that's where it goes. So yeah. Oh, the, oh, one other thing uh, that's sort of important to making this all work uh, is your UI settings. Uh, you'll notice as I switch between these accounts, you know, if I, if I, if I scroll through, through them very quickly, let me switch to that screen. Uh, sorry for those of you who are maybe visually sensitive. I'm just rapidly cycling through all the clients and you'll notice that all the UI elements are all in the same place on all the clients. So how we keep the UI settings the same across all of our accounts is uh, is by copying the the uh, the profiles file from your Eve settings from one to the other and so it's worth understanding uh, how that how those files are structured in particular their names so first we need to understand um, where those files are located and they're located in uh, in your user directory <coughs> so I'm uh, spoiler alert my real name is Michael you can see that now uh, <laughs> and it's going to be under uh, app data which is by default a hidden folder so unhide those folders in your Windows settings uh, and then you're going to local and CCP and Eve and it's CCP Evil and TQ Tranquility. And then these are the names of whatever profiles you have set up in the launcher. I have a default that I have no overlay. Overlay, um, uh, no overlay removes these little descriptions that I have for everybody in, in the UI. Um, setting that up is a whole other video we could probably do. So if someone hasn't done it already, um, but uh, kind of helpful. Um, <clears throat> so settings default. And then you get all these files in here. Now we'll just do one of these BKP files because these are actually created by a pro by my process that I run. Um, but what you have is you have a bunch of core user underscore number dot dat files, and you have core char underscore number dot dat files. Users, these are accounts, one per account, and then these char files is one per character. And so 
um, what you can do is you can identify uh, some of the like the, some of the, the the tools online some of the, some of the articles online they say um, they say you know open up open up uh, your Eve uh, client for the the main character that you want to copy your your profile data from and only that one and then close it again and then go look at this folder for what files were modified and that's your <clears throat> that's your um, your user ID and the character ID for that character and for the user side of things that is I as far as I can tell the only way to really do it the uh, CCP does not that I have seen expose a way for you to discover your user ID um, so that's the only way I've found it to, to to, to do it. Your character ID, you could find, if they're on Zkill, you can look them up on Zkill and there will be a little number in the URL when you click on that character. That is the character ID. You can also use the EVE API, the, the ESI API, um, to, to find it. Um, and let's see if we can do this. If we go uh, EVE uh, ESI, um, you can go to this place, and if you go to Universe, there is IDs. Um, and you don't have to be signed in to do this. You can go to try it out. And uh, we're going to look up um, Laden Obsidia. And we're just going to search for that. And I get that Laden Obsidia is a character, and Laden Obsidia's character ID is 7428187457. Okay? So you can do this for each of your characters without having to like so you're gonna, you're gonna some characters aren't gonna be on Zkill right especially if they're brand new and so this will look them up uh, from ESI directly but this does not work for for um, usernames just character IDs um, so um, I put all that into a config.yaml file that goes along with a Python script that I wrote. So I define a source, which is user ID, character ID. That happens to be my use, my primary user ID, and there's my character ID. Um, and so that then corresponds with there's my user file, and then my character ID file. There's the one for for Willayden. And so you need this for everybody, so that you copy all the relevant files because all of your your UI data about where what what chat window what, like what what windows you have open, where they are, all of that. That's all in your, in, in these, in those files that we were looking at. So what this Python script does, uh, is, uh, it, it's going to read your environment variable looking for the location of your settings, or you can specify it, uh, with a dash dash path, um, variable executing this at the command line. Uh, it's going to expect that your config is in config.yaml, but you can specify a relative path as well by doing dash dash config and running. And then this is going to do two things. It's going to iterate through the config file uh, and it's going to make a backup of all of the profile files for these characters and users. And then it's going to replace them with the content of the source one. And so what that looks like is it's going to, um, it's going to back up your config, your, your config files source first. It's just going to make a backup of that just in case it breaks things. It's made a backup of your, your source profiles, config files, and then it's going to iterate through the targets and it's going to back up the target config files. And then it's going to copy the source file to the target file. And all it's, it's literally just doing a file system copy operation. That's it. It's using shutil.copy file to, to copy the, the source to the destination, which is what you would do if you were going to do this manually. If you were going to do this manually, based on the article that you see online about how to copy your profile data, you would make a backup of all your profile files, and then you would copy your source profile files multiple times and rename them to include the correct username or character, or user ID or character ID. We're doing that same thing. We're just doing it programmatically with Python and a config file instead of doing it by hand, but you can certainly do it either way. Uh, I can make this accessible. Um, it might already be accessible in GitHub, 
but I can make this make this accessible to you in, in GitHub so that you can uh, can grab it and copy it and do what you want with it. Uh, it does use Python. This is using Python 3. Uh, but there are there any additionals? Yep, there is the additional uh, requirement of PyAML. Uh, but everything else, everything else it uses is all built in to Python. So there's no no crazy requirements for this at all. And you are you are welcome to to grab it and do it, and I'll uh, I'll post a link um, somewhere with uh, with how to do that. So if I use my main character as the source and I copy it, by the way, do that with Eve closed on all clients. Make sure Eve is closed on our clients, then do this copy operation because same deal. Eve saves the profile files on exit, and it will override everything you did if Eve is still open. Plus, you don't want to screw on profile files while they're in use. That would be bad. Could be bad. I don't know. But um, so close Eve. Do your copy, reopen Eve, that everything should be the same place on all your characters as it is on your main. And that is really the magic sauce behind what makes this whole thing work. So anyway, that is multiboxing 101, and I really will call that 101. There are probably things that I've done poorly, things that other people have way better ideas on. Totally fair. I'm not pretending to be a multiboxing wizard here. This is just, hey, this is how I do it. Um, these are some of the tools I use to make it happen between the Python script for copying profile data from, from a source character to everyone else uh, and, and setting up Evo Preview to do what you want. So that's it. Hope you have a great day and happy multiboxing.